Anatomic points in ACL reconstruction. The objectives of this presentation are to describe the anatomic bony attachment points of the ACL and how to locate them arthroscopically. This is crucial for a successful ACL reconstruction. Coming to the anatomy, anatomic ACL reconstruction is the restoration of the ACL to its native dimensions, collagen orientation and insertion sites. We cannot restore the ACL to its native dimensions with a, with a reconstruction because the femoral and tibial attachment points are larger or more complex than what a com, uh, rounded graft can cover. Of course, the ACL has different collagen orientations that we cannot mimic with the tendon graft. And therefore, we are left with the insertion sites and therefore we have to be exactly in the, search, in the center of the proper anatomic insertion sites. This is fundamental to reach a successful reconstruction. ACL is made up of two functional bundles, the anteromedial and the posterolateral bundle. Of course, anteromedial or, and posterolateral is based on the tibial attachment. The anteromedial bundle is more vertically oriented, moving more posteriorly on the femur, whereas the posterolateral bundle is more horizontally oriented and coming a little bit more anteriorly on the femur. The anteromedial bundle is main, it's the main restraint against anterior translation of the tibia on the femur, whereas the posterolateral bundle has a more important role in controlling rotatory stability. Moving to the tibial attachment, the ACL is attached in the area between the medial and lateral tibial spines. The ACL does not attach to the tibial spines. It has a broad oval or C-shaped attachment area, 11 millimeters in the coronal plane and 17 millimeters in the sagittal plane. And obviously we cannot cover this with a rounded graft. And therefore you cannot achieve the collagen fill with the rounded graft. So just be in the center of this point and leave the old ACL fibers intact. Do not remove them to have a proper collagen fill. Coming to the anatomy of the femoral attachment, the main is the direct insertion, which is located in the depression just posterior to the lateral intercondylar ridge and anterior to the posterior articular margin of the condyle. It's a large rectangular area, almost 18 millimeters in length and 8 millimeter in width. Again, you cannot have this completely filled with your rounded graft. So be in the center of this area. And if there are still some attached fibers, especially posteriorly, just leave them. Coming to the femoral ACL attachment, it's important to note that no ACL fibers attach anterior to the ridge. So please note the lateral intercondylar ridge and move posterior to it. Your whole graft should be between the lateral intercondylar ridge and the over the top position or the posterior articular margin. And it should be horizontally oriented. Expanding from these main direct fibers come the indirect ACL fibers like a fan shaped to reach all the way to the posterior articular margin of the posterior condyle. Coming to the tibial ACL attachment, it inserts between the medial and lateral tibial spines, as we said. It extends from so far anterior, almost at the anterior rim of the tibia, and goes all the way posteriorly to be just at the anterior edge of the posterior horn of the lateral meniscus. So no ACL fibers are pos that posterior to reach the posterior horn of the lateral meniscus, and they are more anterior than we once anticipated. Coming to the arthroscopic points, this is a right knee. We're, we're using the standard anterolateral porter for viewing. And we would like to see this is the lateral intercondylar ridge and far posteriorly is the over the top position point, over the top point, the posterior articular margin and the popliteal fossa. And this area is where we have to look, put our graft in a horizontal orientation. Posterior to the lateral intercondylar ridge, this whole arch, and anterior to the over-the-top point in a horizontal orientation 
a transportal drilling through the accessory intermediate portal and we will note that in this case we will be almost perpendicular to the PCL with the knee flexed. So again this is the transportal drilling, this is the posterior wall intact, this is the horizontal orientation, this is a right knee. We can see looking at the face of the clock this is almost at the 10 o'clock position and it's almost 90 degrees with the PCL. Moving to the tibia, this is this whole large area extending so far anteriorly almost to the anterior rim of the tibia is the tibial footprint. Please do not remove it because you cannot have this collagen filled with your graft. This is the posterior edge of the anterior horn of the lateral meniscus. This is again a right knee looking from the anterolateral portal. We go in the same line with the posterior edge of the anterior horn of the lateral meniscus to the center of the footprint, feeling the medial tibial spine and being just lateral to the medial tibial spine. This is where we would want to put our tibial ACL guide. So again, this is the anterior horn, the posterior edge of the anterior horn of the lateral meniscus, and follow it to the medial tibial spine, be just lateral to it, and put your tibial ACL guide. This is exactly where you want to be. In this case, we are lucky, this is again a right knee, that this was a mid-substance femoral attachment, so we can see this torn part where the native ACL used to attach so far posteriorly, just posterior to the lateral intercondylar region horizontally oriented. This is the tibial attachment, again a right knee, posterior edge of anterior horn of lateral meniscus, and you can follow the tibial attachment and see that it really extends so much anteriorly, almost to the anterior rim of the tibia. So it's more anterior than we think. And therefore we just put, this, we consider the center and we just put our tibial guide at the same level, the same coronal line with the posterior edge of the anterior horn of the lateral meniscus, just lateral to the medial tibial spine. it's a really large area of attachment. Please leave these fibers because you need this collagen fill. So, drilling the femoral point. We were talking about the transportal drilling through the accessory medial portal. What about drilling through a tibial tunnel, which is anatomically done? So, a trans-tibial drilling. This is a transportal drilling. You can see it's horizontally oriented. This is the proper posterior wall no blowout, and regarding the PCL, we will be almost 90 degrees with the PCL. We would like now to do an anatomic tibial tunnel and then try to see where this leads us on the femoral side. So this is the posterior edge of the anterior horn of the lateral meniscus as we agreed, following it to the center of the footprint, just lateral to the medial tibial spine. So this is an anatomic tibial tunnel. What if we go through it? This will be the difference between a transportal and a transtibial drilling. You can see that with the transtibial drilling, it's more vertically oriented, almost between 11 and 12 o'clock positions in comparison with the transportal, which is almost between the nine and 10 positions. And this will control the rotation better with the horizontally uh, oriented grafts. Now we pull our graft that is horizontally oriented done through uh, a transportal drilling. This is the graft in good tension and with the knee 90 degree flexed this is the PCL and this is the graft. So we know this is the proper orientation. It's really 90 degrees between them. So in summary keep it simple and safe. This is again a right knee. Just feel the lateral intercondylar ridge. This is the arch that we see. This is the lateral intercondylar ridge. Please be posterior to it in your drilling. No part of the fiber should be anterior to it. 
do a transported drilling so you have a horizontally oriented graft. This is the femoral drilling and this is the proper anatomic femoral point for the ACL and again on the tibial side this is the right knee looking from the anterolateral portal this is the posterior edge of the anterior horn of the lateral meniscus just feel the medial tibial spine be just lateral to it and leave as much of the native collagen fibers of the ACL that you can leave for proper collagen fill so the take home message is follow the anatomic femoral and tibial ACL attachment points be in the center of the footprint. No part of the ACL should be anterior to the lateral intercondylar ridge of the femur and avoid vertically oriented grafts by doing a transportal and not a transtibial femoral drilling. Thank you.